Mark chapter 9. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here, present tense, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come in glory. And I cannot explain that. The only one I would assume standing there right now is after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John. I would assume John, the book of Revelation. Kingdom of God come with power. But then what we're going to read is Peter, James, and John, and Jesus see something that no one else ever saw. They're going to see Jesus in his holy state. Pure with the law and the prophets of the entire written bible as far as where jesus is standing right now there's no matthew mark luke john anything else when they're standing on this mountain the kingdom of god the word of god is present and jesus is glorified that's only two ways i could see other than that i have no idea after six days, and with Luke 9, 28, and Matthew 17, 1, 8, it comes down to seven days. After six, and you put them together, Jesus taketh with him Peter and James and John, and leads them up into a high mountain. You realize these weren't wimpy guys climbing mountains left and right, up and down, walking wherever they're going. You... When you follow along the life of all these men in the Bible, get yourself a, a map. And I, I, I've done this a few times, not off. And see how far they walked. They're not driving cars. You know, when they when you got the book of Acts and they're, they're in a cord, that's not a Honda or a cord. They're walking. Peter, James, and John, and Jesus just walk up a mountain. Come on, you ever think about it? That's not easy to do. I don't know if there's a road then. Probably. But still, you're going up a hill. I can't even go upstairs. High mountain apart by themselves. And was transfigured before them. His raiment became shining exceedingly, exceedingly white as snow. Isaiah 128. Pure sinlessness. No sin. So as no fuller, and that'd be a, that'd be a laundry guy back then. No fuller on earth can white them. Purest white, a white that a man cannot do. You know that's how we're going to see Jesus Christ. And he doesn't even have the nail scar, the nail scars in his hands and feet here. This radiant of who Jesus Christ is in Mark chapter 9 is going to be seen in the millennium. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses. Now this is interesting. I was just thinking. John and James' mother came up to him. Grant that my sons will can sit on the right hand and left hand. And Jesus, you know, we went through the story in Matthew. But he never denies that there's a position on either side of him does he guess who's standing behind him right beside him right now wouldn't it be great if we got to heaven jesus said to heaven and earth shall pass away but my words wouldn't it be great to see jesus and there's moses and elias sitting right by him the law and the prophets and the one that fulfilled them all sitting in the middle i don't know just throwing stuff out there i can be wrong and it is i first john 1 7 put it in the blood of the lord jesus it's just something to think about because here they are and we're going to see something that, that really remarkable to me when I read it, when we get to it. So here's Elias and Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master. Now see, this master, what we've seen rebuke in Matthew, you know, you call me master. But this is a master that is rabbi. And we've already heard that Peter says he's Christ. 
So this is a master of true heart that we believe who you are. And there could be a master, you know, just give him the title of master. Shut him up. Or master. We don't believe it, but master. You know, it's a sarcasm kind of master. But here is a master that, you know, we know who you are. There are people called reverend that don't deserve to be called reverend. Master, it is good for us to be here. And let us make the let, let us make three tabernacles. Peter wants to stay here. Peter wants to camp out. Is it wrong? Let's live with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah forever. Come on, Peter, James, come on, James and John. Let's let's stay here right now. See Jesus glorified. There's nothing wrong with that. He wants to live with Jesus. One for thee. Okay, he puts Jesus first. Praise God. And one for Moses. And one for Elias. Memorial. He wants to make a memorial. Now, my question has always been when we're reading through these things, how on earth did he know it was Moses and Elijah? When you read Matthew, they're asleep. And they wake up and see Jesus talking to them. This is another question put out there. Mark leaves out there asleep. For he wist not what to say. For they were sore afraid. And Peter, he's got to say something. Even if he doesn't have something to say, he'll say it. And when you read that remark there, what's not what to say, for, he was, for they were sore afraid. He had no idea to say, but he would say something, right? What would, what would that tell you about all the remarks that Peter makes from his heart? He loved God and he loved Jesus Christ. That's his heart. He In chapter 9, he wants to stay right here with the law and the prophets and Jesus. That's the first thing that came to his heart. Peter is a remarkable man. He's wrong, but he's a remarkable man. That's why he's widely used. His heart is right. But he's sticking his foot in his mouth. And there was a there was a cloud that older, overshadowed them. Pay attention to clouds in the Bible. And a voice came out of the cloud. So was God in that cloud? With Ezekiel? Study those clouds in Ezekiel. Saying. Would you like to be one day, well, that one looks like an elephant. That one looks like a cow. That one looks like a car. This is my, whoa, <laughs> that one's talking. <laughs> Hold on, that one's talking, boys. <laughs> the cloud speaks. This is my beloved son. Hear him. That's Jesus. Never mind Moses. Never mind Elijah. Listen to my son. That would have been a great message for the Pharisees. We, are, we have Moses see. Yeah, but besides Moses, listen to my beloved son. We've got a Pope. Listen to my beloved son. We got Mary. Listen. What did God say? This is my beloved son. Hear him. Of all the people born in the world from Adam to the last man to ever be born, God said about one person, hear him. And that's Jesus Christ. That's a remarkable statement. That's past, present, and future. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, <laughs> they're looking around about, where did they come from? Look around about. <laughs> They saw no man anymore. All right, now Moses and Elijah disappear. They're gone. So, did Moses ever make it to the promised land? Yes, yes he did. Look how many years it took him. And his body was snatched from the grave, Jude tells us. Moses is in a unique character. Say Jesus only. What a wonderful three words with themselves as they came down from the mountain he charged them that they should tell no man what things they have seen till the son of man were risen from the dead and peter does that especially in his epistle he writes about this account 
But why does he not want them to tell him beforehand? Because no one's going to believe. I believe it today. And I can read it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I can read it in Peter's epistle. I believe it. They're not going to believe it. Imagine the Pharisees, if they were to have heard that Moses was up there. They would have been angry. That's our man, Moses. We were brought his seat and had him sit down. Yeah, and forget, this is my beloved son. Hear him. So Jesus now again speaks about his resurrection. Till the Son of Man were risen from the dead. I'm going to die. I can't die if I don't raise from the dead. They kept this saying within themselves, the disciples, Peter, James, and John, questioning with one another what the rising from the dead should mean. What is this thing you talk about resurre resurrection? I, I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. So they asked him, Lord, what does this mean, this rising from the dead? Absolutely not. They've got a question among themselves what Jesus said, and watch this. Asked him, saying, why say the scribes that Elias must come first? They just totally skipped the greatest thing that's ever going to happen. What? The gospel. Jesus Christ died according to our sins. Died for our sins according to the scriptures. Was buried and arose again from the grave according to the scriptures. They didn't ask him about that. They asked him about... We're all... Many Christians are interested. Well, when the end of the times, Lord? When the end of the times? Why say the scribes say that lies must first come? Well, they always come. Every time he says he's going to die, they change the story. Yeah, and it's going to happen again later. Why did this ever just sit, sit down? Okay, Lord, you explain parables to us. Come over here. Explain this to us, please. And record that. Mark some out in your Bible. Every time that happens, they never. They always change the subject real quick. And he answered and told them, Elias verily came, uh, cometh first and restoreth all things. Now they could be thinking about, all right, we just saw Elias. How is it written of the Son of Man that he must suffer many things and be set at naught? Jesus goes back to the crucifixion. He's going back to the gospel, men. Get your mind off Elias. Get your mind to end of the times. I just spoke to you very something important. And I know you, remember I perceive your thoughts. I know your question, but that's the stupid question you came up with. And you know what Jesus is trying to do? All right, things have already come. Yeah, he must suffer many things. He's trying to get them to say, ask the question. And what would Jesus do if they would come up and say, Jesus, we don't understand. What do you think Jesus would do? He would stop right there and he'd, he would have a little conversation with only Peter, James, and John. Adam, where art thou? Don't you think God knew where he was? And be set at naught. What? You guys are going to leave me. That's what he just said. I'm going to be on that cross all by myself. As far as we can get from John, the Gospel of John, John took Mary home. That's, I, that's, that's what I get. She left. Maybe did it, but... I'm going to be set at not. I'm going to be there all by myself. But I say unto you, all right, now I'll answer your question, that Elias is indeed come. And they have done unto him whatsoever they listed, as it is written of him. Did you know that John the Baptist had scripture marked for his coming and his doing and what was supposed to happen to him? John the Baptist, before he died, fulfilled the scripture. Was crying in the wilderness, and when he come, when when he came to his disciples, now this is the nine. He's got the three, the nine. He saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, and running to him and saluted him, and greeted him. And he asked, the, he asked the scribes, what question ye with them, the disciples, the nine of them? And one of the multitude answered, said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which has a dumb spirit. Now that's not, Duh. 
that's a spirit that can't be able to talk. The Bible calls it a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, the spirit, he teareth him. Ouch. Skin gets ripped, something. And he foameth and gnashes with his teeth and pineth away. Pineth means loose flesh or wear away under any distress or anxiety. This son is a big ouch. And I spake to thy disciples, the nine of them, that they should cast him out, the devil. They could not. He answered him, saying, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Not very long. A year and a half. How long shall I suffer you, allow you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him, and when he had saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowing, that's rolling upon the ground, uh, can't say the word now, foaming. So this spirit becomes before Jesus Christ, and he drops on the ground and starts acting like a Pentecostal. Oh, sorry. You ever seen some of those things they do in the Pentecostal? There it is right there, and it's a dumb spirit. You could walk up to a Pentecostal, that's a dumb spirit, and that'd be biblical. Here's this commotion. Everyone's around. He asked his father, how long is it ago since this came unto him? Don't you think Jesus knows the answer? And he said, of a child. And oftentimes it has cast him into the fire. Devils have a thing for fire. Into the waters. Devils have a thing for waters. To destroy him. They've entered into this body to destroy this body. And you're going to say Satan rules. Really? But if thou canst do anything. Have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him. If thou Canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. Now. He asked father. How long is it ago since this came out of him? There's a reason why Jesus is asking this man questions. And not doing it right away. This kid is foaming and, and Pentecostal on the ground. And Jesus taking time to say questions. You ever have to go to a doctor or a hospital and you're in great pain and they're stupid they're just asking you stupid questions like come on get this pain out of here will you I'll answer your questions later no there's a reason they don't want to give you any drugs that you're allergic to they want to see where the sort you know you understand what I'm saying if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe it straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears Lord I believe Help thou my unbelief. See, he's lacking faith. He believes, but he doesn't believe to the fullest. And that's what Jesus wanted this man to say. I want you to say before everyone, you know what? I just don't have the faith. Oh, faithless generation, he said. Adam, where art thou? God wanted Adam to come up and say, God, you won't believe what I just did. I know what you did, but confess it. And straightway the father the child cried out and said, on, said with tears, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Repentance, tears. And when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, ooh, foul, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, could not speak or hear. I charge thee come out of him and enter no more into him the spirit here comes hollywood the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him his head didn't spin 360 degrees and was and he was as one dead insomuch that many said he is dead 
Uh oh. We got a problem. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. But Jesus took him up by the hand and he lifted him up and he arose. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, privately, I don't know how I could ever say that word. Why could not we cast him out? You ready? Because you didn't read my 14 step book. You didn't get my book on this thing. You didn't get my cassette tape. You didn't. This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Isn't that a great charge to his disciples? You guys are not praying. You're not fasting. And he rebukes them all before all. The 12 disciples are there. He said, you know what your problem is? You didn't pray. You didn't fast. Where I am right now doing my outline for Luke. They come back. Lord, the devils are subject to Yay! Yeah, I see Satan falls lightning from heaven. Rejoice that your name is written in the book of life. How about that? That's more important. And when they depart thence and pass through Galilee, and he would not that any man should know it. For he taught his disciples and said unto them, The Son of Man, that's Jesus, they know who that is. Is delivered into the hands of is delivered. Look at that. Not will be, is. Those Pharisees, those scribes have already put a plan in the bay. We just don't know how to work it out. We're waiting for that opportunity to get him. And when we can get him, we got him. We just don't know how to do it yet. Because you see a remarkable statement in John. So I, his time has not come yet. Well, Judas will come to them and make the time even more convenient. It is delivered in the hands of men, and they shall kill him. And after that he is killed, he shall rise the third day. Well, that answers who killed Jesus. The death, burial, and resurrection, verse 31. That's the most important thing. That is what I'm saved by. I am saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But they understood not that saying and were afraid to ask. You don't know if you don't ask. They were afraid to ask when they're coming down the mountain. But they can ask a stupid question like, oh, well, you know, the liars was going to. And they're not afraid to ask. They've asked stupid questions. There's going to be another one soon. And he came into Capernaum. And being in the house, he asked him, What was it that ye disputed amongst yourselves by the way? So they're walking, and they're, the disciples are having a little fight. These disciples are wonderful guys to be following along with Jesus. I feel sorry for Jesus. They disputed, dispute, argued. And you just see God up in front of them, Jesus got, Oh, brother, here they go again. Just told them about what the greatest thing is ever going to happen in the world. And now they're fighting about who's going to be the greatest. You see why God sighed? But they held their peace. For by the way they had disputed. Dispute, look how this way. They disputed among themselves who should be the greatest. Proverbs 13 verse 10. He sat down. <laughs> He's like, I'm going to take a chair on this one. And called the twelve and said unto them, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all, servant of all. He took a child and set him in the midst of them. And when he had taken him in his arms, he said unto them, Whosoever shall receive one of such children in my name, Receiveth me. Whosoever shall receive him, receiveth not me, but him that sent me, God. And again, he's saying, listen, you guys got to be like little children. You got to be innocent as little children. You got to be trustworthy as a little child. You can take a child and throw him up in the air and dad's going to catch me. And if dad accidentally drops me, he's going to do it again. And he's going to do all he can to catch me. 
I'm going to sit at that table and there's going to be some kind of food. I hate green stuff, but there's going to be food there for me to eat. That's why he brings on a little child. A little child doesn't care about authority. He wants love, caring, and being taken care of in arms to be wrapped in. A lot of people in church today. Hey, I'm going to be the authority. I want to be in charge of this. I want to be this and this and this. this. Okay, that's a little child. But when it comes to little children, they give them junk and garbage. i got to add that one. I'm sorry. And John answered him. John answered him. Saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. Wait a minute. John, you missed the whole point. Now we change the subject again. Because we don't want to be like little children. We want to have a position. We want to have letters after our name. But we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And he followed us not. He didn't join our church. He didn't join our program. He did his own thing. And we forbade him because he followed not with us. Now, we've got people that, we got a guy that, that I'm going to say preaches where we are before we come. I've given him time. Go ahead. Let him finish. I try to walk up to him, try to be friends with him, and nothing for you guys to know. I try to befriend him. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can likely speak evil of me. Listen, they're going to say good things about me, or they're going to say bad things about me. For he that is not against us is on our part. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name. Because ye belong to Christ. Very I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. Now I gotta say something about this. Because we've had people give us water. This is before the death, burial, and resurrection, salvation of Jesus Christ. But even still, you give somebody who's doing something to work of the work of the Lord. It's a hot day. You give them water. If it's a, hot, it's a cold day, you give them a cup of coffee. You have coffee given us too. God acknowledges that. And God may be working in their life to see if they really, would really come to Jesus. I, I assume that some people that, that do give us water and coffee and stuff like that, they are either saved or they're on the path of salvation. Because they're not saying Jesus Christ is you know, they're not making fun of them. Now let me throw another verse in there. Hebrews 13 or 14 says, and I, I can't quote the verse, but you know what? Angels are amongst us. You better be careful how you treat some people. And then, you know, we're in the day and age of today, and it's, you know, somebody gave me an open cup of coffee, and I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you are an enemy, but but I'm not going to say if somebody gives us a cup of water that that's their salvation. That is their I'll say, hey, you're saved. You enjoy what we're doing. Or God is working in your life. But don't ever put somebody gives you a cup of water. Don't ever put it as their salvation. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe. Okay, here's the conversation. Little boy, you come on, little girl, come here. You got to be like this child right here. Puts his arms around him. Lord, we saw someone casting out devils in thy name. Okay, little boy, thank you. Can we go back to our conversation again? <laughs> we had a little intermission. Bottle water. Buy your bottle water. Now, can we get back to the little child again? Did you read that in your Bible that John interrupted God? Yeah. <laughs> Isn't man so funny? You never read that before. John, and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, he's still got the child there. Look at John like, it is better for him a millstone were hanged about his neck 
and be cast into the sea. John, you're so worried about water. <laughs> now, let me tell you something before we finish these, these last few verses in Mark 9. In the gospel, the word H-E-L-L -L is 15 times. Matthew, nine times. Mark, three times. Luke, three times. John, zilch. And I have not even have mentioned when he speaks about eternal fire. Or fire. Or burn. Or gnashing of teeth. Just the word H-E. See, people will come up to you if you get involved in the public ministry. Jesus never preached about H-E-L-L. -L. No, 15 times the Bible records that word. And we're, this one right here is going to be three, four times maybe. Somebody comes up to you and says, hey, the, Jesus never preached about that. Get them to say, are you a Christian? Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian. You never read your Bible. Perverted Bible. Hades. Even this Bible I got. So some hell notes will bring you to Hades. Well, go to Hades. You're going to go to hell without Jesus Christ. Know somewhere in your Gospels where Jesus did say hell. Me, it's Matthew 10. So when somebody goes, Jesus never preached up. And while you're asking him if he's a Christian, turn to that place that you know, me, it's Matthew 10. And then have him read it. My street Bible has Christ's letters in red. This one doesn't. And say to him, listen. What are the red letters in the Bible? Oh, that's what Jesus said. Really? You believe that? Yes. Then have them read that place where it says hell. And I know what will happen next. They will turn to Hades. Well, this is a really good one, the Mark 9 one, because in these last few verses, he says it several times. So this would be one to turn to too. And this one right here, we're doing in Mark. It's also in Matthew. This one's not Mark. This is a great one to deal with a Jehovah Witness that says that hell is the grave. Now, I had fun with that one. I told him, I said, listen, I've seen many open holes in a graveyard. I've never seen any flames coming out. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. So, if thy hand offending, cut it off. This is before the gospel. This is before 1 John 1, 9 is written. There is no blood atonement. We are in the law where if you commit adultery, there is no sacrifice if you kill somebody there is no sacrifice and jesus has already told them from matthew even if you think about doing it you're guilty so if your hand is going to do something that you're not supposed to it is better to cut it off it is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into wait a minute let's skip that word for a minute Having two hands to go into hell. The one that created hell told you, you will have your two hands. Never mind what's, I always forget the chapter in Luke. 15, 16. Luke says tongue. Eyes. Finger. Jesus says two hands into fire that shall ne that, sh that never shall be quenched. Never. You see how strong it was for Jesus to go to Calvary and come out of that empty tomb? Never. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. That's a remarkable statement, not for tonight. Hell is unquenchable fire. If thy foot offend thee. Now, hand, what you touch. Foot, where do you go? Cut it off. Now, am I telling you to cut off your hands and stuff like that? Not today. I would not say that during the church age. I say, if I were to preach this message, it is so serious that Jesus said, you just might as well just cut that body part off. You know what David should have done? Should have plucked his eyeball out. You know what you better do when the Antichrist is in reign? If you're going to sin with your hands, here, put the mark. You better cut that hand off. That's how serious it is. 
Luke 16. This is a literal physical kingdom. It is so serious before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ in hell. Jesus said, you just rather maim yourself. And religions make light of hell. Preachers make light of hell. And Jesus said before he's gone to the cross, you just might as well just cut your body part off if it's going to kiss. Nothing will get you out. Hell is serious business. <coughs> if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt. If it's uh, unable to walk, step, a limp into life, then have it two feet. You got two feet in hell. To be cast into hell unto the fire that never shall be quenched. You'll have far, you'll have firefighters in hell, and they won't be able to put that fire out. You talk about these great forest fires in California. Well, eventually they go out. Hell will not. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quite. There is no death in hell. I said we can't get into the worm. That gets into all kinds of studies on that worm. But you know what you become when you're in hell? Just You become a worm. Maggots. Would be the closest thing. Screwing around each other. I, I said that's a whole other study. If thy eye offend thee, David. If thy eye offend me, so you got what you touch, where you go, what you see. Eve went up to the tree. She saw it was good for food. She touched it and ate it. And then that brought death. The wages of sin is death. If thy eye offend me, pluck it out. Ew. I hate eyeballs. It is better for thee to enter in the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Jesus, hell fire preacher. Two words again. Hell fire. Jesus also said you will have eyeballs in hell. And when you deal with the Jehovah Witness, tell when you open up that grave, there is no flame. Fire, 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 fire. Deal with Mark 9 with, with, a, with a Jehovah Witness and they walk away. Oh, there's no fire. You're the fool. How can you not say there's hell? How can you not say there's fire by the words of Jesus? We turned a message about a little boy or girl into hell fire. How did we get to this hell fire? He was talking about, you guys think you're the greatest. You'd be like a little child. Who's God was casting out devils? Well, let's get back to the little child. It'd be better for you to be to treat this little child right than to be cast into a, into the sea, and then he goes into hell. Where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. For everyone shall be salted with fire. That was something that was required in Leviticus 2:13. I believe there's another place in Leviticus that said that you're not you're to put the salt on abundantly. I, that's my own word. I can't quote that verse completely. But it said the salt shall not be lacking. When they brought that offering, if it required salt, you put salt. They ever put salt on a wound? Yow! That's a torture they use. They'll bruise you and cut you open, then put salt. For everyone shall be salted with fire. And every sacrifice shall be salted with salt, 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 salt. Ezekiel 43, 24. Ezekiel 10, 2. Salt was required by the sacrifice 
given to God by the people. So what, God, what Jesus Christ has told you, men, when you see that brazen altar over there, that represents hell. When you put that thing on the thing to be burned, that represents a soul in hell. And you know how far that was to the mercy of God? You had two veils that, it, that, that prevented you from going from the brazen altar to the mercy of God. And the only one that can go into the mercy of God was a particular person. You have to get through the water to wash you. I didn't say baptism. You have to get through the word of God, the bread. You have to get through the light of the gospel. That's Jesus Christ. You got to get to the unsun's altar, which is the Holy Spirit, before you even enter. And only Jesus Christ ripped that veil in two for you to walk in. When those priests, after Jesus died, walked into that temple that day, there was trouble. And the Pharisees and Sadducees and scribes left the people at the altar. They never told them about that, that curtain, the veil. Salt is good. They tell you it's not. But if the salt had lost its saltiness, I never heard that one before. And I'm going to trust God. I just never thought salt went bad. Wherein will you season it? Have salt in yourselves. And have peace one with another. Oh, he's been rebuking the disciples. We're not under grace yet. We're not under the death, burial, and resurrection. You guys are having a battle over there. You better knock it off. Because if you were to die right now, you'd go to hell. That's what he just told them. They're being prideful with themselves. Yeah. And we know they're not going to die, but they didn't know they were going to die. And Jesus is saying, listen, you know what? You... Did I just say anybody angry with his brother without a cause? Uh, oh, yeah, we'll move, remove that without a cause. The Bible says be angry. I get angry when people take my Lord's name in vain. I get, I, I got angry tonight because they're playing the stupid music. That, but sin not. Okay, just let them do it. And when you read about these disciples, what they do, I mean, they would sometimes, listen, you're talking about four fishermen. Peter. Let's just talk about Peter. Peter whipped the sword out and took a man's ear off. These are not Looney Tune American sissy panty waist. They're walking down the street with Jesus. They probably pulled their swords, probably pulled their knives. I've seen lobstermen do it. I've seen lobstermen, they go close to someone's pot and man, the Tyler, get down in the cabin and close the door, and I'll let you know when you come out. Whoa, what? Get down in that cabin. And then there's just... He's warning his disciples, you guys are in deep danger. You are in deep trouble. And one of his disciples ends up in hell. Or the Bible says his own place in hell. We just got through the lesson. Listen, we're on top of the mountain. We're doing great things. Nine of you could not heal this one spirit because you lack prayer. You lack fasting. And I'm going to die. I'm going to be buried. They're going to hate me. They're going to, I'm going to raise from the grave. I'm better than you. No, I'm better than you. No, I'm better, no. You see what I did? Hey, Jesus didn't take didn't take you up to the mountain, did he? Yeah, but uh -huh. I healed seven people and you only healed three. Well, you forgot about the devil I dealt with. Oh. You forgot about the city where I preached to 12 people there that got saved that day. And we had more banners in our vacation Bible than that. And the church had other banners and all that. And we dunked our preacher for a rebaptism in our... <laughs> well, listen, guys, you got to be, you got to be, you got to be like a child. You got to be as Jesus, we saw someone over here. John was getting rebuked. He said, look, I got to change this subject here. It's a remarkable thing. And you know why Jesus said you don't watch TV with this? Because your mind can do things that TV can't. And when you read when I read my Bible, I'm just I can just see these twelve guys, they're just fist fighting. Jesus up ahead, I'm like What were you disputing about? And you ever wonder when Jesus is in the garden, it's like And when you can't hear somebody having an argument, you can see 
Yeah, but Jesus, but Jesus knows. He perceives. And that's that's just. And you just wonder when he was in the garden. He's he's praying earnestly. He looks over there asleep, like. But he still went to the cross. He still went to that cross. And you read in the Book of Acts when Peter, I think when Peter went to the Cornelius' house, they came back. The Bible says they were in contention. They were fighting. What'd you go over there for? It never stopped. Paul was angry at Mark because he went home. That's human nature.